This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Kit ran into someone he hasn't seen in over two decades. Was it the police? Uh, definitely wasn't, and it certainly wasn't at the state fair. Oh, well, I've got tech thoughts. Does that mean anything? Um, it might mean something to our guest. We welcome to our show, Jury Facts. Hello! What sound does a penguin make if it shits in the woods alone? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 186 for Thursday the 6th of September 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. I'm not going to screw up the intro. Kent, you did. Ha, ha, ha. What's going on, guys? It's Thursday night. It's Ritual Misery. I'm happy as hell to be here. And I'm happy that Tom, a.k.a. Jury Facts, decided to join us this week. Uh, What's going on, dude? I'm so excited. This is fun. I love coming on here, seeing you guys hanging out. Dude, Always a good time. You, you can't see anything with a beak in your way, dude. Like, what I is going it on? Keeps, it keeps falling down. It, for, it's not working out the way it planned. For the audio listeners, uh, he is wearing a penguin onesie. Like, it looks like fresh out of the box. Like, it, it looks brand spanking. Oh, and he's got camo plant pants on underneath. But uh, this, <laughs> it's an important aspect of it. Um, dude, that's a, that's, that's a hell of a get up, man. What's that about? Um, I mean, it's kind of like those uh, T-Rex things, you know? You can never go wrong with this. It doesn't matter if it's Halloween, if it's like a fundraiser, uh, or if it's just like a, a first Thursday date night. Yeah. Um, I mean, so this is what I want to happen, all right? Because I want to prove this point. Because I'm thinking uh, you probably don't want to wear something like that at a funeral. So I want you if you're still alive when I die to wear that to my funeral. That's what I want. I want you to come in with, uh, with, uh, those, those shot glass or the, uh, the, the, the test tube shots, like nothing but a, a tray of blow jobs being delivered by a penguin. <laughs> That's what I want at my funeral. I'm calling it now at Amos's funeral. We're going to have, we're going to have a penguin <laughs> passing out blow jobs. <laughs> um, it's going to be I'll amazing. Be, I'll be drunk on ruin them. I'll just carry it around. I I got a couple bottles of that up in my cabinet. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I, I don't keep it in here for fear I might actually try to drink it one day. Uh, right? <laughs> oh my god! Like it is a it is a nostalgic piece of apocrypha, but it is not a great beverage. That was uh two two years ago at uh, at South by we did that on our last night uh, with uh, with Kathy and Richard and oh it was not. Oh. Gosh, yeah. Who, was it Sunny? Was it Sunbun that we got him from? Um, I think so, but I'm not sure. I think I'm pretty. I, I think it. I think it was. I think it was. And I think Sunny got them from Justin. Yeah, yeah. I don't because I also got a, yeah. a. I got one bottle from um, uh, Dark Redeemer at Nerdtacular the following oh, couple months later. Right. So. Um, hey, dude, uh, I went to the Alaska State Fair this year. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, we had the silent disco. It wasn't as cool as last year because there was only one station. Didn't ha- didn't have the three stations you could flip to. It was d- just a DJ, and he was just he had all his tracks put in virtual DJ, and he just had it auto-mixing, so it basically fucking sucked. And I went there with, uh, with uh, Amber, Sterling, Madison, and David, and all of us wanted to hear a different color of music than the crowd was requesting. Um, al- although I can't but cherish the, the times when we were all dancing along, beeping, bopping to ABBA. ABBA. Okay. Um, um, were you, did you become a dancing queen? Uh, no, I, I almost became a vomiting queen. It, <laughs> like, it was just, man, uh, such a great opportunity and such a shitty exercise in, in execution. Like it just, it was just awful. Um, however, I did see Jim Gaffigan and that was awesome. Oh, you actually watched him perform. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. Oh, excellent. Hey, so uh, to go back to the silent disco, I have never participated in one of these things. Uh, Tom, have have you ever done a silent disco? I I have not, but it sounds very interesting. I'm, do, I'm or a really silent rave. I guess they do play. silent raves as well. Do, do you uh do you do you know what they are? It, it I I want to say isn't it the thing where they like put on headphones and you hear it? Yeah, but it's not actually real. Well, it, you know it's, I mean? it's, like, it's 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 well, not real music being played. 
There's it's, no big speakers. It's all on your headphones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if you're walking okay. by, you just like what you're just watching people just like, <laughs> like well, the th- wigging out. To, the thing that to gets nothing, me is it's not it's not silent though. It's surprisingly loud just by the, uh, people moving and everybody and like the small groups trying to whisper to each other because everybody still whispers as if everybody's going to hear them even though everybody's wearing headphones. Um, the the I'll, I'll explain last year's because last year's was way better than this year. The key was all the headphones, like it had three channels, it had blue, red, and, and green, and it had like neon lights on the edges. So you knew what channel everyone was listening to. The DJ was on one channel, and then you would see, like, you know, you could listen to the DJ, and last year was pretty good mixing stuff and, and uh, actually putting it down, a, a real DJ. Um, and then there's two, like, like radio stations. One was more of a top 40, you know, and the other one was kind of a, a hip hop top 40, right? So you'd be sitting there listening to one, jamming along, whatever, and you hear a crowd just suddenly erupt off to the side, and you'd look over, and they were all on a different station you were, so you'd flip over to their station, and it would just be, you could start listening to what they and it was always awesome. It was just great. Mm. Um, so when you said at the beginning that you wanted to listen to different colors of music, I now understand what you mean by that, and but I was afraid to ask earlier. <laughs> oh no no no! Total different uh, double entendre. Not only was I meaning the uh, the neon lights, but I was also meaning they were playing a bunch of white music at a at a, 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 a oh, like, basically a like club ABBA. scene. Yeah, and like it was ABBA. just <laughs> it was it was just uh, like anytime I'm I go to anytime there's a bunch of people wanting to dance, you don't play just regular rock and roll or you're not playing southern rock if people are really wanting to dance. You know, especially right. with young people and. Right. The next night we went and they played a lot of hip hop. I was just there with the wife. The kids didn't get to experience it. So I feel like they got shorted. But I mean, it was, yeah. Um, you don't go to a dance club to, to listen to shitty white people music. You go to a dance club to listen to fucking, to music with a beat. with It's got something that you want to jive to, you know, that you really want to get down. Especially when it's a bunch of uh, uh, teenagers and, and young adults. And then old souls like me that just like to hear the new shit. Mm. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, if you get a chance, I, I suggest going. Just hopefully yours turns out better than mine did. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's I, 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 mm. Jim Gaffigan this, was good though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear. I would be so upset and disappointed to hear that he was not good live uh, because he he is one of my favorite current comedians. Yeah, he he did some he did a lot of horse jokes and he did jokes about doing horse jokes and like he did some Alaska jokes. He had had appendicitis the day after arriving up here, so he had to have his appendix removed like 4 days before the before oh, the show. Jesus. Um but yeah, it was uh so he made some jokes on that and then of course he finished up with a hot pockets. And uh yeah, it it was it was pretty good. Uh fully enjoyable. Um now if you wanted, you could always watch some Jim Gaffigan on the YouTube. Uh, but Jury Facts, um, what the hell you been doing on YouTube, man? Um, man, I, I haven't really been doing a lot on YouTube. Um, uh, you're talking about uh, you know, making stuff or anything. Unfortunately, I haven't been doing it, but I've really been uh, watching a lot of weird stuff. Uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh weird uh, like, uh, like what? No, 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 so, so so wait 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 are we talking <laughs> on the scale of weird are we talking higher or lower on that scale so higher is weirder higher or lower than poppy oh, oh definitely definitely lower okay okay Cause, oh, okay because pop poppy popped my limit that's what she did i couldn't <laughs> I, I couldn't watch that shit anymore i had to I can only watch it. I watched that stuff whenever it came out. Man, that stuff threw me for a loop. I had no idea what the hell was happening, Mm. but I loved it at the same time. And Mm. then you're right. I got to the point where it was just like, it's too much weird. Yeah. 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 She was, she was either talking. um, I got to the point where my mind settled on one of two, uh, two justifications for the videos. One, she was actually talking to herself or and it was like an introspective thing or she was talking directly to my soul and bypassing my brain filter and i wasn't okay with either one of those so i nixed that and i stopped i couldn't watch anymore and that was only after like the maybe the fourth or fifth video like I, most of them were really short i think i watched one long video and that was, that was the key like i watched one that was 10 minutes long and i was like i'm done i i can't i i i, no. I can't even imagine dude I need to reverse time. I need to. I need to. Doctor Strange, this shit back to be back to when I was normal. 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I uh, my, my weird stuff really isn't that bad. I was just messing around. I uh, I watch a lot of uh, car stuff about cars that I can't afford. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, living the dream. You know, through YouTube. Yeah, vicariously. Uh, yeah, but one of my favorite channels is they they break down the the dynamics of stuff. It's called Donut Media. Um, they they do like a, once a week they pick like a car and mm. do like the history of and stuff like that. It's really yep. cool. I actually watched one earlier today called uh, the history of the Honda Prelude, yeah. which is really cool. Seeing like the evolutions, why they made changes, why they did this and that, and it's, all it's, that kind it's, of it's got the uh, the chubby white dude that's way more excited about shit than he should be, right? Yeah, and his catchphrase is. Eh! Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I love those videos. Every time they pop up in my feed, I watch them and they're they're awesome. Yeah, he, he I love his uh his running gag that he has throughout it about his dad leaving and coming back at random times <laughs> in his life. None of it's real, but it's hilarious. Like it's just it's great. I love his sense of humor. I love the way they explain things. Uh there's shiny things and, and bright lights that keeps me entertained. Yep. Um and, and and it's it's informational as well, especially like the one uh, I saw the one uh, he did about Old Man Shelby. That was a really good one. Yes. Um, of course, I'm I'm a big fan of classic Mustangs, so I watched that one. That was really good. Uh, he did the Dodge Viper. Like I've never seen someone so ecstatic about the Dodge Viper in my entire life. I I thought they were piece of shit cars. Now I love them, and I've never actually touched one. <laughs> like just from, just from his excitement. So yeah, I I no completely don't it media man. They got they got some good shit going on up there. If you're if you're a car geek, that's yeah that's that's one of those channels that you have to watch. Yeah, I, uh, I, I like watching that stuff for the info, and uh, I like uh, stories as well. There's a, a channel called Vin Wiki, which is, they, they just have people on there who are really, uh, I don't say infamous, but, you know, popular inside the car community clubs and bigger YouTube names and stuff like that. And uh, they go on there and tell about weird stories that they've had, either buying cars, selling cars, driving cars, how they got their jobs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there was a... a a straight to DVD series a while ago called Techademics, um, like back in the early mid two thousands, and they had one of the co-founders from that, where it was like about street racing and stuff, and they were telling the stories, or he was telling the stories about how he like got busted doing like a hundred and eighty five and a thirty five, and he got off with Jesus. warnings. Like, <laughs> it was, yeah, I can like tell you how, how he got off wow. with a warning. <laughs> yeah. that's what happened there <laughs> shit um yeah sorry audio listeners we're not going to uh translate that one <clears throat> um yeah so uh that's awesome i i've man I, youtube is such a love-hate relationship for me like i love going to youtube and finding information i, I watched a I watched a video uh, on on my lunchtime today uh, when actually I was at a doctor's appointment, like waiting for the doctor to finish, like for them to. Anyway, I was in the waiting room and I was watching this video about the history of Voldemort, like the life history of Voldemort, <laughs> and it was actually really good. Like it was really well put together. It had quotes from the book and the movies, had scenes from the movies. It was really well assembled and put together, and it's it was actually really interesting. Even though I'm I'm like a maybe 60% on the whole Harry Potter thing. But, you know, I, I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was, like, earth-shaking. Of course, I'm a little past the demographic for it. But um, I thought the video was really good, and I thought it was really interesting, and uh, it was pretty cool. But YouTube in general, man, it's just a, a love-hate because half the time I, I just find shit on there. I started watching, about a week ago, I started watching wrestling videos from, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the channel Watt Culture. Mm -mm. Yes! And... I watched like 30 videos or something, and now my my suggested feed is nothing but other wrestling videos. Oh my god! I think I fucked up my algorithm. Um, it, it, it can't don't log into the Ritual Misery account and go to YouTube because you'll see nothing but UFC because that's what I like to uh, like to watch when I'm <laughs> editing videos and shit. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I, oh the, the one god. culture I love that as well. Again, that's all about like the the way they do their videos. Like I just love the little bits of humor in there. I mm. love their sarcasm and commentary like I, I i love that that's one of half the things of it's, that half of it's the british accents yeah <laughs> i i one of my guilty pleasures on youtube besides watching uh, russian car crash videos is um <laughs> be, yes. be, 
Be, be, oh, are we literally all the same person and we just don't realize yeah, it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the one that I don't like to admit but is completely true is Watch Mojo and Ms. Mojo. Those little top 10, like if you're going to do a top 10 list, Mojo is doing it right. Like they are, they're entertaining. They've got enough snippets, enough sound clips to, to keep it real. And they're short enough. They're only like four or five minutes long. So they're short enough to, to not draw, draw it out. It's not just one. It, they're, they're how you should be doing like top 10 videos. And they do them all the time on all kinds of random shit. So those are, that's like one of my guilty yeah. pleasures on YouTube. But BuzzFeed is probably my guiltiest pleasure. Mm. I, yeah. I, I, I would go with the, the Watch Mojo out of those two just because Watch Mojo is they're really good about being timely. Mm, like, right. That, you know, like just, uh, was it yesterday or the day before they released like a Eminem top 10 verses? You know what I mean? Like they're on top of it. Like somebody does something, they do a top 10 about that person or thing. Yeah, like, you, you just, right. you just went over Ken's head with the, uh, with the Eminem thing. I'm sure he's <gasps> not, not anywhere up to speed on the whole, the current debacle. Uh, no, I mean, I know a little bit that he called somebody out and then that dude called him out or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what happened. Kent. Yep. Yeah. Whatever. I don't, I, whatever. Like pop, like super duper in the weeds, pop culture, celebrity shit. I, yeah. Good luck. I like, I know Burt Reynolds died today. Yeah. That is like, that is as far as I go with my. Oh, oh, so like, here, here's talk. something about Burt Reynolds, right? Uh, have you read any of the articles about Burt Reynolds having that he died today? Like any of the, even just the headlines. Like, have you found a fucking headline that does not mention his mustache? Uh, I, like, I, know I don't think every I've seen one headline. Oh my, oh my God. Like CNN was the mustachios, mustachioed machismo, blah, 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 Burt Reynolds. And someone else was like, the the Burt Reynolds who made uh, machoism or, or machismo and m mustache is cool again or something like like oh, geez. like they were all looking at his fucking mustache. It's like Tom Selleck. When what's gonna happen when he dies? Is this mustache just gonna live on forever? Like <laughs> I mean probably. I mean Burt Burt Reynolds mustache. I mean I'm pretty sure that thing's immortal. So it's, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be Tom Selleck and Burt Reynolds mustaches. Like they're gonna be they're gonna outlive the cockroaches at the apocalypse. Yeah, nobody asked Sally Field how she's feeling about uh, about Burt Reynolds dying though. So I'm I'm interested to see that one. Uh, was, was it Sally Field? Is that who I'm talking about? Who I'm thinking of? I have from, no idea from the Bandit movies. From Smoking the Bandit. Uh, all right. I mean, I, I remember Jackie Gleason was in it. Oh. Yeah, not so. He had a mustache in that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, he played the uh, he played the 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 Cletus D. Judd of of, of smoking the bandit. Um, Cletus D. Judd. <laughs> <laughs> what are you even saying right now? <laughs> I'm just mixing names together, man. Um, speaking of the police, dude, what is this? This is the police shit you got on the on the show, Doc. What's that? I ain't gonna even try and try and t transition because you're still laughing about the last bullshit I fucked <laughs> oh up. Oh my god. Well, I mean, speaking of Smokey, let's talk about this is the police. Roscoe P. Um, Coltrane. That's who I was fucking thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? Cletus, Cletus D. Judd. He's, he's, the, the uh, he's a comedian country guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, okay, man, one uh, icy bay IPA and I'm fucking half assed over here. OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this is the police is the name of the game that I streamed last week in lieu of us doing an episode proper of right. rmp because and my apologies for that it was um the twins birth 16th birthday so we went up and did cake and had some fun yeah i mean that's an, that's important family stuff um yeah so this is the police was on sale last week for like three bucks on steam it's typically like a, a 15 dollar game or something mm -hmm. like i got this thing for three bucks it's one of the like most consistently extremely highly rated and recommended games on steam hmm and I was like, oh, okay, I'll add it to my wish list. It was like three bucks. I was like, yep, uh, I'll take that. So I decided to go ahead and stream it since I hadn't played it yet. Mm -hmm. I just bought it like three days prior or whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, super cool game, dude. It's like a, um, it's kind of like a, a uh, choose your own adventure mixed with like a resource management type of game. Okay. And what is great to me about it is it's this like, it's this story that, that, is told uh, like you'll there's only certain points of the, of the game that you actually have to make any decisions. The most of it is like watching a movie and this particular game is kind of like a, like a film noir 
style, like old cop, uh, like old, well, you know, you know, like the, um, I can't think of an example right now, but you know, the, the old detective movies where like, you know, the, the dame appears in the, mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. the doorway and mm-hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Like that's the feeling that I get from this game, but it's like, it's an actual cop. He's like, like your character, the main character is the chief of police. That's about to be forced into retirement because he's not like, um, you know, he's not going along with the status quo. He's still trying to be old school and stuff like that. And he gets mixed up in this like, uh, corruption scandals and, and a bunch of stuff like that. So this, this title is definitely, a, it's a mature rated game because there is sex, there is F words left and right. Um, lots of violence. I mean, you're, you have to send cops out that in uh, a lot of times they get killed and there's all like, I don't know. There's all kinds of, of um, just very adult themed content in this game, mm. but it is so immersive and so much fun. And as a bonus, it is excellent to stream because there is like, there's places in the game where you have to make a decision. Mm-hmm. And if you've got an audience, you can like, you know, all right guys, what do you pull, think I should do? Here? I, so it's got natural yeah. pauses that make the streaming. Absolutely. Very easy yeah. It's pretty nice. great. But I, I recommend this game to anybody, even if you're not a streamer, I, I definitely check this game out. It's called, this is the police. Uh, uh, Dom, what do you think of when you hear this is the police? Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, no squid squid real quick squid in the chat says farty mcduck lives on um uh, that is actually that was the name of one of my cops that was killed <laughs> farty mcduck oh my god farty mcduck That's yeah awesome. and uh yep uh rip farty mcduck um, um i would say like it, in terms of you know if you tell me it's a game and you give me the title i'm gonna obviously say some kind of detective game or like a, a target shooting game Hmm. (laughs) what did i miss that was so funny amos i took that completely wrong (laughs) i don't think i don't think you did i don't think i don't think you did at all oh jeez. okay uh (laughs) okay so can't you took it wrong uh (laughs) um all right uh what about this uh this dirty sanchez over here dude what's up with that What? Uh, your, what are we talking about? Your dirty? other your other show note. Oh, dirty. Okay, you threw me off with the dirty. I was actually looking for a dirty Sanchez. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, what I the was just fuck? Like, Where I was that? like, I don't I, see that in here either. I, I'm the one that's half toasted on beer, and you can't catch a <laughs> damn toss to save your life. All right. <laughs> you don't... <laughs> Yeah, oh, you're such a tosser. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have devolved in the full blown chicanery here. I'm not sure that's a word. Debauchery oh that, that'll work. Yeah, sure. One of those. Um, yeah. So Sanchez, I do have the word Sanchez in the show notes. Uh, Staff Sergeant Sanchez, to be more specific. So what I was alluding to in the beginning of the show, someone that I hadn't seen in over two decades. I, by pure chance, ran into one of our old TIs, Amos, from Mm. basic training Mm. back at the 323rd Training Squadron at Lackland Air Force Base, Texas. What was it called? The House of Pain. House of Pain. House of Pancakes. That's what what everybody else called it. Yeah, the House of Pancakes. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Um, No, so in our grocery store, we have a bar. And Tom, let me tell you, the best bar in town is at our grocery store. Is this at the uh, at the Lowe's? Yes. Yeah. At Lowe's grocery store, we have a bar, and it's fantastic. And it's not quite a Taco Bell cantina that serves beer, but it's close. Correct. That is accurate. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's next best competition in town. Is probably I, I, just, I just fucked Tom up with a deep cut. <laughs> 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 oh my god that's wonderful oh, um that was good. so so a lot of times steph and i when we're grocery shopping we're like uh hey you want to go grab a beer real quick yeah sure we'll go grab a beer so <laughs> that's what we did last week so and what you're saying is i shit and you drink uh, yeah you go to the grocery store to take a shit mm. 
I go to the grocery store to get a beer. Hmm. I, I like I my think, grocery store better. Yeah, yeah. I think your idea is way better on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so we're we're just sitting at the bar, just having a drink, and there's a guy next to me on the bar stool, and we just kind of start shooting the shit as you do with that. I use I usually call them my five minute friends because you talk to them for like exactly five minutes. You get to know as much as you can about them in that time. And then you never talk to them again for the rest of your life. Also known as the maximum tolerance of Amos's people skills. Yeah. So that that's, that's, yeah, you know, I use the, the five minute friends thing when I travel alone and I'm in, in a hotel, like if I go to the hotel bar, like that's like, that's what I look forward to is like a whole series of, of five minute friends for like the next hour. Um, anyway, so I was, I was kind of doing the five minute friends thing, talking to this guy and we started just having coincidence after coincidence. We're talking about our air force careers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. You, you were a TI. What squadron were you a TI in? He was, uh, the 323rd. I was like, get the, get the fuck out of here. I was like, uh, yeah, that's the squadron I, I went through. And, uh, he's like, wait, when did, when did you go through? And I told him August of 95, you know, August, October of 95. And he was like, holy shit, dude. I was a TI there from like, he was like nine, like, uh, I think early 95 to late 96 or something like that. I was like, oh my God, what is, what is your name? And he said, Sanchez. I was like, holy shit. I was like, McDonald's application. He's like, oh my God, you remember the McDonald's application. <laughs> this TI used to, he used to, on his bulletin board, would put a McDonald's application. And whenever somebody would piss him off, and like if he was just being a fuck up troop or whatever, he would make him stand in front of the board and read the McDonald's application because he told him that if you fuck this up, if you keep being a fuck up, that's what you're going to be staring at. <laughs> and uh, anyway, yeah, th it was a total trip because that, that dude was a legend in our squadron, because, not just for the McDonald's application, but he also had a, a skull on his desk. That would he just used to intimidate the poor, <laughs> the poor unknowing airmen that would come. Through. Um, yeah, that was just uh, that was a that was a trip, man. Seeing that guy and uh, I, I got him as a Facebook friend now, which is mm -hmm. like the first person I've friended on Facebook in probably two years. I don't know. Oh my um, God. But, uh, your Facebook official with your TI. Yeah, apparently. Well, I mean, he wasn't my, my specific, like, he wasn't my team chief or whatever, mm. like, my, my main um, TI. He was, like, a brother flight TI. So, uh, after you told me about this earlier this week, I was thinking about it, and my, so my TI was Master Sergeant Delgado. We were, we were, we were his first flight. We were his baby flight, so he had to have a flight of his own before he could become team chief. Mm -hmm. Um, Shervaney was the senior staff sergeant that we had. Shervaney, he was actually the team chief training Delgado, then would reverse roles on, on future flights. Right, right. And I don't mm -hmm. remember our senior airman's name, but we, the other guy was a senior airman. So I did not have Sanchez. Um, and you might remember uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Shervaney because he's the one that had the hat that went like this, and he walked around with right. his head tilted all yes. the way back. So yep, look, kind of a skinny guy. Yeah, so he was looking down at everybody, and he was notorious for this hat because when he, if he stood straight and tall, his hat was at like a forty-five degree angle, going from <laughs> yes. his eyebrows, like below his eyebrows, up around the top of his head, and would sit like that. So when he walked, he would actually right the hat by tilting his head back and looking down <laughs> at everybody. So, um, yeah, it, it, I, I couldn't imagine running into into my one of my TI mostly because I don't really remember much about the time. I just. I was just trying to make it through. I just, I, I knew it didn't matter as long as I made it through. None of that would even fucking matter in the slightest. Right. So I just kind of PTSD my <laughs> way through that whole experience and just, <laughs> just muscled through. Oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> Tom, did you just dab? He did. I was uh, sneezing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Which is what I always think of when I see somebody dab. I think that they're sneezing into their arm. I think that's what the whole thing was meant for. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, Tom, what would you do if you ran? You were you were sitting down for a beer while you were grocery shopping in Alamogordo, fucking New Mexico, and uh, you ran into your first boss. Oh boy, um, I I I. I <laughs> first of all, I'm wondering why the hell he's in in New Mexico. <laughs> Well, I, I'm even trying to like legitimately remember who my first boss was. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, that one. I, w- I if I like recognized her, I would I would have a conversation with her. She was cool to me. Yeah. You know, I, I was I was a young kid, and she let me get away with some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 oh yeah 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 oh yeah all right yeah. we could really go down oh. a we could really go down a rabbit hole with that one <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> we, we, we're not going there <laughs> all right but um so you weren't at uh at the uh the lowe's grocery in alamogordo new mexico this weekend but you were away from home i was i uh i made a little road trip kind of last minute decision and i was like nah, you know ah, let's go for a road trip you know it was i had a kind of a long weekend yeah or at least yeah. a couple days off in a row so i decided to take a little trip you know yeah um um did you just like um i don't know just d- did you even venture outside your state or yeah i mean like you know, I made a decision. Um, like I got off work on uh, Saturday at right around six o'clock, six thirty, something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, "Eh, fuck it, let's uh, let's go to Atlanta." Now, now yeah. for, for reference, you uh, you you hail from like um, a dead horse Yukon, right? So it was just a quick skip, hop, and a jump over. Oh yeah, dead yeah, horse Yukon. <laughs> For, to, to put it in legitimate context for people, uh, Toledo, Ohio is close enough to where I'm at that we'll consider that's where I'm at. So you're looking at like a 12-hour drive then? Easily, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And you just decided hell with it. I'm going to go go, go to Dragon Con because, yeah. because why not? Well, I mean, the, the whole reason was like, you know, this year I had a lot of stuff going on, you know, with, with work and, and uh, other business ventures and like you know i was like i can't i didn't go to hardly i don't think i went to any of the conventions this year i didn't do any of them and uh i wasn't going to go to dragon con until i i don't even know why i pulled it up i don't remember why but i pulled up the uh the diamond club um discord Mm -hmm. and i saw somebody posted in there like you know the last night attack at dragon con and i was just like oh what is yeah. happening? So did some research, you know, and by research, I mean, hey, tell me what this is in the Discord. And they're just like, this is most likely their last one, at least for a while. Mm-hmm. Gave me a little bit of backstory. People linked me, which, oh, thank you for linking me. I don't have the patience to search for shit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're right. And then, you know, I watched the clip and everything and, uh, I was just like, all right, well, we're going to Dragon Con. Hmm. And yeah, this, I went. So, can't, this is life without kids. That's what this is. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> last time I drove 12 hours on a whim, I was probably 19 or 20. <laughs> like, that was yeah. a long time ago. It's also the last time you enjoyed a long road trip. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I mean, well, especially one that's like 12 hours or more. Yeah. So, all right. So you drove 12 or 12 plus hours to Dragon Con. And how, how long were you actually in Atlanta? Um, I pulled into Atlanta right around 515, 530, something like that. Um, I didn't get parked until almost six because, you know, Atlanta. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause I, I, I had to, I know it was right around that time because I missed uh, Jerry's, uh, politics times three um show so i just went got my pass so i could get into a hotel literally one time and uh went up to the uh uh, vendor area because i always love buying their overpriced stuff that i could have bought three months ago for a retail and uh found a lot of cool stuff got a lot of christmas shopping done there Got a lot of Christmas shopping. Well, done. You got you got to optimize your time. You you, you got to dual purpose this stuff when you just decide to drive oh, twelve yeah. hours for no reason. And you have no idea. My brother is going to shit a brick this year for Christmas. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Like he like th- he's just going to keep pulling stuff out of this bag, and it's just going to be like a bigger brick, a bigger brick, a bigger brick. Like it's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I got done with my shopping. Um, walked around, got a bite to eat. 
And then about 9.30, I got in line for uh, the last night attack. So. Hmm. And how was it? I haven't seen it yet. I have. I haven't. Uh, I haven't. I haven't done the uh, the 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 requ- requisite research. It was. It was very fun. It was very hilarious. Um, I got there super super not as early as I should have, so I did what I do, and I just like hopped up on a counter at the like right next to the front row instead of sitting all the way in the back. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, I'm gonna sit here. Nobody said anything, so I was like, cool. Um, and it was a blast. Uh, you know, don't get Brody happened. Uh, always a good one. And then there's some other spoilers that I can tell if you don't care. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was absolutely hilarious. They, they got super, uh, I don't say super, but they got, uh, sentimental and, you know, about being at Dragon Con and watching it grow from a small show to, you know, as big as it is now and everything and the following and all that stuff. And it was, uh, it was really cool. Like I, you know, I, uh, jury even, uh, came up and like, as I was sitting on the counter, like right before the show, whenever they got, whenever they walked in, he came up, like, uh, he was talking to somebody up on the stage and he was looking around and like, uh, I was taking pictures of Mm -hmm. stuff Mm -hmm. and like, he like locked eyes with me and he like, he just walked away from whoever he was talking to and came up and he was just like, Holy shit, dude, you actually came. I thought you were joking. <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah. I, you know, I was just like, Oh, uh, well I'm here. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like here, here I am. Yeah. That's pretty um, great. I, I was, uh, I was privy to some of the spoiler action, uh, because of my work with, uh, uh, certain individuals last week. I don't want to be spoilery. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. So the, the surprise guest is, um, yeah, someone that that Amos interacts with on a quite regular basis. So I'm not yeah. surprised that, uh, that 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 I knew that you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But great, great reveal though. Like that was, yeah, that was awesome. Um, it's awesome. Oh, here's a useless Amos- hint because it doesn't matter. The person <laughs> does not. Only use spoons to eat with. Dun dun dun. That's a that's a pretty good one. Uh, <laughs> Ken's like Ken's like how, how how what what is what does that even mean? There is no spoon. <laughs> um, Amos, so speaking speaking of podcasts and, and, and podcast work that you do and uh-huh. people you interact with mm-hmm. and whatnot, mm-hmm. um, there is a there's a podcaster that I haven't talked to in quite a while, and I kind of miss him and want to have him on the show again. Um, o Doctor is someone mm-hmm. that you work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what what's uh, what's he got going on that that might be in your sphere? He and I are currently working on rebooting IQMZ Tech. It's a 30 minute ish ish show that either concentrate on uh, 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 tech ideas of the day or tech news or tech reviews. Like one of those three things. Each episode will be uh, in the feed. Um, right now, I'm, I'll have a let me uh, let me uh, uh, shit. I'm not good at the links. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll put this in the uh, in the in the chat room, and then it'll be in the sh- in the show notes. It's the beta episode for ep- or beta version of episode three, so it's uh, it's not in the feed yet. You can't find it on the iTunes and things like that. But there it is. Uh, go li- give it a listen, and it- it's really a-, a rough draft. It's kind of him and I just trying out the conversation and seeing what's going on. But we'd really appreciate the feedback. So if you would uh, give that a listen and uh, let me know what you think, uh, podcast at ritualmisery dot com. You said so, that show's still in beta, right? Well, it was originally launched, and yeah, it, 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 I've returned it to beta. He brought me on to bring it back to beta. <laughs> hashtag so, back to beta. Yeah, ha- hashtag uh, back to beta. So, well, so I got a, I got a question about this. So, mm-hmm. you were actually a producer for IQMZ Sports. Mm-hmm. That's how. That's like where your professional. Um, uh, relationship with with Owen began right, right? Yep. so but on this show you're not just producing you're you're like an on air talent right yeah yeah I, I I actually go on there and spew forth my uh, my opinions about tech excellent and uh, Squid in the chat says if Amos is involved it's always in beta no shit welcome to my life right <laughs> life in beta 
That, that's so, that's going to be my new podcast, uh, the, the, my secret, super secret project. I'm just going to call it that, Life in Beta. So, uh, I, uh, dude, I, I, I want to move on. I want to move on to the next segment, but I, I kind of, I have mixed feelings, man. Uh, we've had something on this show for, oh, I don't know, what, three, four months? I don't know. How long has this been going on? Since March. Started in March. So, however many months that has been. Uh, it's something that's been real fun, um, aggravating at times, but uh, but also really fun. And um, this is where this is where it ends, uh, at least for this season. Yeah. Uh, the B Team Diamond Club movie draft ends tonight. Yeah, and you, but we've. So you know, before the show, we were talking about how I get irritated because some apps like to close and they don't want to reopen. Yeah, Google Drive just did that to me, so it took me a second to get it up, but here it is. Well, also, every week I put the link. Welcome to your B-Team Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv, for the week of September 3rd, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Is it just me, or do y'all smell pumpkin around here? Summer must be over. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Walking <laughs> Drunk is in last place with $404.6 million. Team Game Night is in fifth place with $580.1 million. Team Rachel Misery is in fourth place with $751.9 million. Team The Bond Squad is in third place with $784.3 million. Team Have a Drink is in second place with $877.8 million. And in first place with $1,041.8 million, it's Team Movie Party. That's your Movie Draft Minute. Big ups to Stephen Cogswell for tonight's music. All totals are accurate as of September 5th, 2018. So we are finishing in fourth place out of six. Yeah. But we got damn close to third place. Yeah, we did. Like by far the closest gap between places is us. We're like $30 million behind VOD squad. Yep. And uh, that's pretty close because none of the other places are even in the same ballpark as nope. each other. And now these are not the official final numbers, but they are, for all intents and purposes, the official final places. There's no, there's there's nothing more to be added. There's no, none of these movies in their third or fourth week are going to come through and make $200 million or anything. So it's over. We came in fourth and we sucked and we hit ourselves and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun though, and I'm I'm 99.9% sure that we're doing a winner draft, and I'm super looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, Dom, you, you you need to get in on this. You need to find a find find a, a, a time for a draft and find a partner. We're, we're trying to recruit new blood, uh, sure. primarily because we're hoping to escalate our winner up to the main Diamond Club movie draft. Um, mm-hmm. so this would be like the B league, like the, the, the triple a or whatever that you call it. <laughs> like um, the, like the winner gets like an automatic buy-in type of thing. Yeah. To, yeah. to the, to the big, to the big leagues. Um, but if you don't to the grown up, the, to the grown up table, the league, you get exiled forever. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's got, it's got to at least be the top four because fuck you. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I would say the last placer can can't play anymore, but that's Jackie Hearn, and well, we appreciate her for all she does anyway. So we're not going to exile her either. Right? Uh, well, may, maybe yeah, Jackie and Fitz for that. Yeah, matter, may, maybe that. game night. Maybe game night can just be booted. Fifth place is out. <laughs> <laughs> but W. Scottis won over at game night is the one that organized our draft in the first place. Ah, damn it! See, I don't think is, we can exile th- anyone. This is so <laughs> difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, and also big props to have a drink for coming in real strong. Um, they were kind of a late contender, and uh, they're 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 more frog pants than they are Diamond Club. But man, they came in and they rocked it out. So, good job yep. on them. Oh yeah, but uh, uh, absolute congratulations to Movie Party. Yep, uh, Poodle uh, uh, and Sasian, uh suck it. Yeah, <laughs> how, how does it feel to live with part uh, with one half of the winning team? Like, ah, like, are you going to be able to live that down? Is it going to take the winter movie draft to finally like a- escape that? Uh, what, and more importantly, what have you done to break up that team? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't you, yeah, don't don't you have I, a Trump call in that? Like, can't but, you just throw a spade down and well, be like, this I'm team's hoping, over. <laughs> I'm hoping that they get called up to the, to the grown up table and yeah. we won't have to compete with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good call. Good call. Hey man, it's uh it's time for this now. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him.
Uh, Squid in chat says that he volunteers his tribute so that uh, we can uh, keep the escalation going. Um, we may take you up on that. Be careful what you wish for. Hey, uh, dude, you got a game for us today. It's uh, I, I actually got to see the name of it beforehand this time. It's called <laughs> Jury Facts versus Amos Fiction. I'm going to guess that you and me, or you are going to test me and Tom against each other. Oh, shit. That's an awesome play on words. I just got it. (laughs) (laughs) Where's the dinger? Give him a ding. Can't give him a ding. Uh, 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 Jeez. I don't have... Oh, Kent's not prepared. Hey, uh, so you're going to pit me and Tom against each other on what we know about each other or what we know about ourselves, which could be fun because I'm half drunk. Oh man! See, now I kind of want to like ask you your the, like the opposite sets of questions. Um, yeah, but no, you're absolutely right. So we are going to play jury facts or Amos fictions, and it's going to be what you said first. I'm going to ask you questions about Tom, and I'm going to ask you, Tom, questions about Amos. There are five facts about each of you, mm. some of which are fiction. Mm. Um. Actually, so that was actually my first thought was to do just a straight up true or false, uh, like and actually just say fact or fiction. But I I figured it was more fun to give like uh, two choices. So I will ask the question about the other person and I will give you two choices and then you just pick one. Um, Let's raise the stakes a little bit. Uh, Once you you read the question, allow the person who's who the. Allows allow the person of whom the question is about. Uh, there's I'm fucking that language up all the way. Grandma girl would shoot me in the head right now. Um, so if you're reading a a, 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 a a a question about Tom, allow Tom the positive or negative. Like does he or does he not think I will get it right? Ooh. Mm. Or does that not work with your your? I your... don't like that. I don't like that because that could be. That adds too much too much complication to the game. We're just going to play this one straight. But what I will have you guys do is after the, the question is answered, mm-hmm. the person that the question is about has to explain the situation. Oh, it's even worse now. Yeah, <laughs> for you. So Now, now if, right. do, do, if they get it right, we explain it. If they get it wrong, we explain the wrong answer in, in an uh, ad-lib uh, improv way. <laughs> Sure. I will. Um, so I, I will decide on the spot. So after each question, I will tell you what to explain. OK. OK. All right. So the first question is going to go to you, Amos. If you get it right, you're going to hear this. If you get it wrong, you're going to hear this. OK. OK. okay. Uh, ready? Let's, uh, since we don't have any music playing, cut that down just a touch. It's a little okay. hot. Got it. If I was a real producer, I would uh, I would I would take that part out in the post show, but I'm not, so it's gonna go live and people are gonna be listening to this like, yeah, man, that was a little too loud. Thanks, dude. All right, Amos. This is about Tom. <laughs> Tom's strong opinion about shoes formed when he worked for Foot Locker in high school. Mm. Does he love them or hate them? Uh, I'm gonna say he loves the shoes, hates the feet. <laughs> Um, so you did get that correct. He does love the shoes. Uh, I, he, he has exited stage left. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, uh, yeah, that, that would be stage left. Cause but it's right. I do, I do want to hear from Tom about first. I want to hear what he thought about the feet at Foot Locker. And then I want to hear a little bit about his love for shoes. Uh, the feet nasty as hell, just ugh, nasty. You have no idea how much hand sanitizer we went through, especially the people that, and and the, believe it or not, back then we were supposed to put the shoe on the foot of every person. Mm. No, that's weird. Um, uh, did, but we like had Al to Bundy. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you ever get that Al Bundy feeling? Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. It, Yes, very much so, multiple times. And right. it's so especially were- weird whenever it's like one person. Uh, all right, so there was this dude. <laughs> there was this dude that would come in at least once a month, okay? And buy, you, you know, like that old man shoe 
that like New Balance all white with the white in on it with the little blue outline on the end. Were they were they Velcro? Uh, no, they weren't Velcro, but they no, were. They, they had white laces though. Yeah, they they had white laces and but they were never tied because his foot. He wouldn't buy a wide. He wouldn't admit that he needed a wide oh, shoe. So the, the laces were like there was a, there wasn't enough lace is what I'm getting at, and. He he would come in at least once a month and and buy the same pair of shoes and he would ask for the same person. That person was me, <laughs> and it was weird, mm. and I didn't like it. Mm. But I made money off of him, so I was cool with it. <laughs> so I I I You're have such a shoe whore. I I have one. I I, I have a similar story ish. We when I was working at U-Haul, and this this might actually get me in some hot water. Um, when I was working at U-Haul, we had this one lady that would come in and she would buy wardrobe boxes. We had, you know, two different size wardrobe boxes, the talls, the smalls. And she would always check all the boxes and then choose however, whichever number she came in that day of the best ones. But she had to check all of them. She had to check all four edges and all the corners. She didn't want any of them that were banged up. And if you had the little wardrobe hanger that was like kind of bent out and didn't quite sit in the box right, she didn't want that. She wanted a brand new one, really, really perfectly formed. One day, she, cause she would come in and she'd just be a total bitch about it. Like she would just yell at people and everything else. She'd, she'd go in there. I came in here for six boxes and y'all only have five of them that are worth the shit. And she was just a nasty, nasty old woman. Um, one day she came in there. We had just re just restocked boxes like like that morning, maybe an hour before she came in. She came in, she pulled in the parking lot, and she sat in the car for a while. Well, while she sat in the car, we all noticed she was there. Um, I went ahead and... Uh, let, let, let's go with uh, Pecker Drag. I Pecker Drug all of the box, all of the wardrobe boxes, every single one of them. <laughs> so the, no matter which box or boxes she bought that day, she was taking Pecker Sweat home with her. Jesus Christ. <sighs> but uh working at Foot Locker had has opened my eyes to weird and off uh off the normal beaten path shoes. Like I, I love to and these are from my trip back up from Atlanta. I stopped at, at Nike and Adidas outlet stores. And uh like God, I, I love looking for weird color shoes. I love looking for something that, you know, isn't your normal you know, like found it, you know, off the shelf at, you know, Foot Locker or Finish Line or something like that. Like, I love the 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 weird shoes that you just don't see very often. Hmm. And I, I got, I think my, my count's up over 60 pairs of shoes right now. Um, Like quite a few of them aren't even opened or worn or I just, I, I like. In the, in the realm, in, in the realm of sneakerheads, that's still pretty, uh pretty light, low key. That's, that's not even like a, like, that's a modest collection. Oh, very much so. And and, and I, I don't get into like the eight, nine hundred dollar pair of Yeezys and stuff like that. I mean, well, I would if I had the money, but like, you know, I, I go to their clearance stores. Like I'm talking like these are like 50 bucks, Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I, I like the different uh, options and weird stuff that you can't find in the regular stores and all that stuff. So, yeah. All right, Kent, what you got for us? All right, uh, Tom, this question's for you. A certain beverage consistently causes Amos to move his bowels. To put it a different way, which beverage makes Amos shit? Is it Dr. Pepper or pumpkin spice latte? I'm going to go with Dr. Pepper because he eats before he goes grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> very, very well done, Amos. Um, does, uh, does, does pumpkin spice latte affect you in any way? Are you are you a pumpkin pumpkin spice connoisseur? It nauseates me. <laughs> so, uh, a pump, so pumpkin only has one purpose in life, and that's to be in pie. Period. Dot. Yeah. End of story. Pumpkin All right. Pie is over. All right, Amos. Tom received as his first car a stick shift. Ford Tempo. Ouch. So which, upon receiving this car, which emotion did he experience? Was he delighted because he wanted to be a race car driver and was excited about the stick shift? 
or was he upset because he didn't know how to drive stick? Um, I'm going to go with excited because, uh, it, uh, I mean, it's, first of all, it's a Ford, so you got to find something to be excited about. So I'm going to say the stick shift was the, was the, the, the best feature on the vehicle. That is incorrect. Uh, Tom, do you want to tell us about, uh, why you were so upset about this? Man. I, I had just turned 16. Like it was the, the week after my, my birthday and everything. Uh, uh, we were on vacation during my birthday, you know, no big deal. Came home, uh, little family get together and I got the car and I was like, Oh, cool. A car. All right. I'll deal with it. And then it was a stick. And then I was just like, I hate you dad. <laughs> and then, no, but, <laughs> but no, uh, so, you know, his, it was pretty close to that because I was borderline crying at 16 because I had no idea how to drive a stick. Mm. Not a clue. And his reaction was simply, well, uh, either you figure it out or don't drive. So I very quickly learned how to drive a stick and have loved it ever since. It's the best thing that ever happened in terms of getting getting a stick shift because without that, I wouldn't have found my love of cars and modding and all that stuff. So. Nice. Excellent. All right, Tom. To demonstrate his double jointed dexterity, Amos will eat which tasty treat with his toes? Jelly beans or Doritos? Amos, you sick bastard. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Doritos. It is, in fact, Doritos. Amos, uh, uh, just take it away, dude. Tell, tell us um, about it. That's, that's a new meaning behind toe cheese. We, uh, so, <laughs> so the story behind it is that so I'm double-jointed in my fingers and my toes. Uh, and one night we were all drinking, playing three-man, which is a really fun game if you've never played. Uh, it's, it's a drinking game where rules get made up. And at one point, someone made the rule where no one could use their hands for anything but the dice. So, which also meant that no one was allowed to drink and no one was allowed to eat except if they were using something else. Well, you couldn't use your hands to take off your shoes. I was the only one barefoot at the time. So I decided to continue drinking with my feet and continue eating my Doritos with my toes. Um, I would deny this, except there is VHS tape of it somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And so there, disgusting. so there you oh. go. Don't fuck with me when it comes to three man. I know the, I know the shit. <laughs> All right, Amos, <laughs> which, which number is closer to the typical number of photos and videos that Tom takes while on vacation? Five or 500? Oh, 500. You would be incorrect just because we see him take 500 photos and videos at South by Southwest. Uh huh. Uh, Tom, you want to explain this? So, the and th this is the this is a good one. I knew this one would trip you up because, like me personally, I I am not a huge picture taker. I will go through and I will go on vacation and I'll come back and people will be like, oh, show me some pictures of like the the waterfall that you went to or like your hiking stuff. And I'll be like, uh, here's a screenshot of the Pokemon that were around. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like I don't, I, I'm not a big, huge picture taker for personal stuff. Like I, I love to go and just like hang out, chill, literally like, uh, one of my favorite things to do is whenever I'm in Tennessee or something like that is I'll just sit on a, on a, on my deck of my hotel room because I don't actually like staying in wilderness. I just like looking at it and like just sitting out there on a sunset or actually getting up early and watching a sunrise and just like enjoying it and viewing it. But uh, the jury facts, you know, started to be a, a thing for the community. So for people that weren't at the event or anything like that. So I would take a shit ton of video, as many pictures as I could and everything like that. So people at home could experience through me, mm. you know, like those, those types of things. And, I thought, I, I thought that if I was wrong, you were going to say, Oh no, he only takes one video a day. He never takes pictures. 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah, one seven hour video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, you punk. What's up next? <laughs> All right, Tom. What was Amos's first CD? Was it Two Live Crews Nasty as They Wanna Be? Or was it Dr. Dre's The Chronic? His first CD. Mm-hmm. Maybe those I'm gonna were, uh, <clears throat> those were optical uh, discs that yep. uh, used to contain music uh, prior to. Um, if you know, they for, were made in the, China, the, they had the, the sun warp on them, and yep. yeah. Um, so for all the all the kids out there, ask your parents about CDs. Can I ask a question? Uh, you can ask it. I'm not sure if it will get answered okay. though. So you specified Dr. Dre's The Chronic. Can you specify which two live crew? Nasty as they want to be. Okay. I wasn't sure. Did you say that? Did I totally ignore you on that? Yeah. I believe yeah I said. You, uh, you, you had a PTSD tick, man. You were... <laughs> oh, right. um, nasty as they want to be, which was... Dr. Dre's The Chronic. I'm going to go with uh, two live crew. Uh, I'm sorry. It was Dr. Dre's The Chronic. Amos, how did you um, how did you get this CD? Did uh, did you spin your birthday bunny on this or? Uh, I got it by five finger discount. It was free ninety nine. It was. <laughs> I don't think I want to ask any more questions about that. Uh, it, it was it was at the mall. It was the first thing that I ever stole from a store. Uh, not the last, but it was the first thing I ever stole from a store. Uh, it was at the mall, and I remember after grabbing it and walking away, uh, I got chased. I don't want to say chased. I got I got uh, followed followed through the parking lot um, oh, by security from the mall, and I didn't go back to the mall for like three weeks after that. And Squid says, I thought it was Justice for All. Squid would know because I think Squid was with me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, in Justice for All, I, since you brought that up, Amos, or I believe maybe, was maybe your you, first maybe, cassette, right? Maybe he was. Yeah, that's the first cassette that I bought with my own money. I bought that and Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction on at the same time from Kmart. And it was censored. Oh yeah, fuck Kmart and Walmart <laughs> yeah. tapes. Oh my god. Oh god, I'd get so pissed because I went through like eighth grade, probably like eighth grade, ninth grade. I went through a gangster rap phase, and mm. I made the mistake of buying a rap CD. I don't even remember which one it was, but I bought one from Kmart. Yeah, and yeah, it was like it was unlistenable because it was like it and, and uh, it, uh, <laughs> like it was so bad. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Amos. Mm. Which phobia does Tom think is bullshit? Is it acrophobia, the fear of heights, mm -hmm. or arachnophobia, the fear of spiders? Uh acrophobia, the fear of heights. Because I too believe it is a bullshit. Uh so the two of you discuss your <laughs> agreement or nuance about why you, acrophobia is no bullshit. one is afraid of being up high everyone is afraid of the sudden stop at the bottom if they fall yes <laughs> yes there is no such thing as <laughs> height is 100 percent relative based on the land that you are standing on it's yeah. the fear of falling from height or sorry a, a, a piece of land to a piece of land that is lower there's it's not the height, it's the fall, yeah. which admittedly <laughs> sucks. But, like, you well, know. From, from what I hear, the fall is great. It's that, again, it's that sudden that, stop at the bottom. That, that, that Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, next. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right, Tom. What is Amos's favorite poem? Is it Undeclared War by Ethan Kane, or is it The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe? Edgar Allan Poe. I'm going to go with the one by Ethan Kane. Oh. That is incorrect. Amos, um, so Undeclared I want, actually, poems. before you, actually, Amos, before you say anything, Tom, have you read any poetry by Ethan Kane? I have not. Do you know who Ethan Kane is? 
the Twitter handle that I follow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this yeah, is so, this is, this is so the best Ethan thing Kane, ever. Of course, is a is a long time uh, pin name, internet handle, etc. That Amos uses, um, and Amos. Undeclared War is an actual poem. It is. It is. That you've written like a, like forever ago. Yes. Like it, it's almost, that poem is almost as old as our friendship. So that's a. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually looking it up now and it, it's currently searching through the entire uh, 32 terabytes in my computer. So. Oh, <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can shoot you a link real quick. In oh, yeah. Box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can. While I do that, while uh-huh. I look for it, uh, tell tell us why uh, why why the Raven, why Poe. Um. So, uh, I think Poe was just well ahead of his time with the the way that he wrote and the topics that he wrote and and the way that he um he he visualized things not just in a metaphorical sense but actually like everything that he all the illusions that he used had anchors in reality. It wasn't just Oh, I smell the wind like the the ocean sea breeze and a fish's fart. Like it wasn't it was it wasn't some random shit that I couldn't understand. His illusions and the things that he was talking about were things that I could understand at a young age, at like eleven years old. Um but the Raven in particular was the first time that I uh read a poem or heard a poem read out loud, it would be, be more accurate, that had a vocal cadence to it. It wasn't just uh, you know, four syllables, four syllables, four syllables. It, it was. It has a. The entire thing has this very specific cadence that, if you read it right, you can actually change the mood of the entire poem in the using the inflection in your voice. But you kind of have to stay consistent throughout, or you have to vary it according to the passages. And it just it tells it. It's just. It's the first time that I'd ever had something like that that I experienced lyrically, where it felt like there was a song in the uh, in the in the music or in the in the words itself instead of just in the okay. music. So, well, that's that's yeah, that's thank you for that insight because that's like that's a kind of a, a look in your look inside your soul a little bit. Um, so I just sent you the link to the document that I have mm-hmm. of Undeclared War, which is actually. This is my transcription from, I believe, the original written, handwritten paper that I found, like a, a super faded handwritten paper that I yeah. found. Um, and I I transcribed this into um, a, a word processor document, a Google Doc, in fact. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't want you to read it out loud, but just, just, just glancing I, it over. Do you have any quick thoughts? Man, to... I was a f- I, like, how was how has it been until I was forty one years old before I was finally diagnosed with depression? Right. How, uh, how is emo as fuck? How is that a fucking thing? No, I, I wouldn't say I was emo. I was very depressed. Emo is like an, a, a certain sure. method it's of an expression. Artistic expression of it. Yeah. 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 No. So, it so was, I, I say I'll leave it up to you. But I suggest that we discuss it further, or even get a dramatic reading from the author in the post show. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, let's do the post show stuff. Okay, moving <clears> on. <throat> right, <laughs> Amos. Which which old mobile game does Tom still play? Like it's the new hotness. Oh, is it is it Angry Birds or is it Pokemon Go? Oh, totally Pokemon Go. Okay, I like I, I pay attention to the conversation as it happens. <laughs> I yeah, I figured you would get that one, especially since w- the I think the last time we hung out with Tom uh, was we, in Austin. We were on a bus playing Pokemon Go, trying to snatch yes. him as we drove by the hotspots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with everybody's yeah. betting oh, running down, the, and also the raid battles in in uh, in Utah. Oh, uh, I, did, that I didn't take part in that. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So. Quick recap on the score. It is three points, Amos, two points, Tom. Whoa. Ooh. Tom, this is your final question. You have a chance to tie the score at three. Okay, let's do it. Do we have a sudden death? Um, typically, deaths are sudden. Uh, so I'll take that as I, a no. 
So, so, so we'll make this question worth two points then. Let's go for it. Go. <gasps> All right. So two, yeah, two points in for the win, Tom. What was the first time that I ever saw Amos knock down, fall down, holy shit, fucked up, drunk? Was it while drinking Jack Daniels while walking the walking along the railroad tracks in our hometown? Or was it while drinking Jose Cuervo while we were hanging out at the county fair? Mm. I remember both these times, by the way. <laughs> but which was the first? I, I clearly don't remember either one. <laughs> I'm not even sure one of them actually happened. <laughs> Squid, said, Squid said that one th- that one time after homecoming. Uh, so, I'm not sure if that was alcohol. <laughs> I I think I'm going to go with the county fair only because let me give you my my insight to this because if I'm right I'm a fucking genius. If I'm wrong everybody will forget it in 30 seconds. <laughs> I, I mean that's the chance you got to take right. That's so I think it was the county fair because you didn't have to go home afterward. You were staying with somebody. Mm. Mm. Which I, I guess like- could have happened on the railroad tracks too, but there's a higher likelihood of... Oh, damn it. <laughs> I liked your logic. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the first time I ever saw Amos shit hammered was Jack Daniels. We were probably... God, Amos, what? 10th 15, grade, 11th grade? 15, 16. Yeah. We were walking on the railroad track, with, which walking on the railroad tracks was something we did like damn near daily. Like that's just. Oh, my, I should have thought about the yeah. obstacles. <laughs> yeah. And this dude was like, fall down. Oh my God. Like he was crying. Like I think he, I think he started crying the first time because he fell and like skinned his knee or something. And I think he was really upset about that. But then he like got upset about just how life is stupid and <laughs> like everything sucks. Told you I should have been, should have been diagnosed as, as the, yeah. Uh, like I was like, I was messed up myself. Like I was, I was not sober, but I was nowhere near the condition that this dude was like, he was near like hospitalization being required. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we actually started drinking Jose until much later. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I even I do not remember trying tequila while I was in high school. Mm, I I tried a lot of things when I was in high school. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I win! Yay! Yeah, with a score of three to two, Amos is the winner of this game. Thank you so much for playing along, Tom. This was a blast. <laughs> this was awesome. I loved it. All right. Um. So we are we're kind of at at time now. Uh, we are. Yes, it is about that time, Tom. You're kind of a, a citizen of the internet, a netizen, if you will. If people want to track you down and interact with you or just find out more about you, where would they do that on the internet? Um, at Jerry Facts, pretty much everything. Uh, Twitter, I don't use Instagram, even though people keep yelling at me because I don't use it. Um, at uh, Jerry Facts on Snapchat, I try to remember to use it. I'm not great at that. Twitter is the main one. Uh, follow me. Find me. Watch my stupid stuff. Excellent. And I am at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Uh, pretty much everywhere else on the internet, I'm either Del Noche or Del Noche 77. Mm. Look me up, add me, interact with me. Um, I would enjoy that a lot. Amos, what about you, dude? Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. You can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas or subreddit on ritualmisery.reddit.com. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Um, we are live every Thursday, well, almost every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.com slash ritual misery. Um, and, uh, of course, we want to give a big shout out to Kim McLeod for allowing us to use his music, us and the other half of the internet. Because, yes, we comprise half the internet, just us. Um, thank you for listening, for Kent, for Tom, and for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya.
Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Can I please have your attention? In the last story. That's not the right one. R I T U A L M I S E L Y. There we go. Thank you, Flavor Toothpaste. Uh, <laughs> I, I um, hit the wrong damn button. Now I got to edit that shit. <laughs>